children and is homeless, and so they're helping take care of that family. Uh, details on the announcement sheet, uh, just to try to help them, help this family. Um, you can bring items any morning this week or next Sunday, and then they'll be delivered. Um, I'm pretty sure, probably, if the family's still in need, they would have some following night service. Uh, this morning in our prayers, we'll add to the to the existing prayer list our sister Evelyn Jameson, who has a, a planned surgery this week, and so we ask that God watch over and take care of her throughout. Um, in your pews now, or if you're at home in your mail, watch for it if you are a voter. Uh, because we can't have a January voters meeting, because we can't put everybody together, plus we probably wouldn't get a quorum because of folks who can't come for whatever reason. Um, we still have some items that need to be approved by the voters. And so uh, there's packets including them, um, the ballot itself that you'll need to return and a self-addressed stamped envelope with that send it back. If you want to hand deliver it, do so, and we'll save that envelope for future use, I guess. Um, but also, there are sheets of paper to describe and I hope answer any questions you have about the various items that are being voted on. Um, and there are also, I think each one has a name and a number to call if you have any questions. So we should be able to give you good information so you can make decisions. The ballots that have to be returned to the office by February 11th because one of the answers we get, we have to pass along to our, our synod uh, a couple days after that. So the 11th of February, we need to have those back. Um, the last announcement is this. We have been uh, receiving a few questions back regarding a letter that everybody received from our congregational president. And uh, based on some of the questions that I've received, the first thing I need to tell you is relax. And big is going on. Um, there's nothing really to be concerned about per se. Uh, it's just that in these days of COVID, you guys know this in your whole lives, we have two additional issues beyond what we always have. Number one, everybody's on edge. Everything is uncertain and we're all just a little jumpier than we normally are. Um, as a result of this, um, sometimes people jump to conclusions without full information, and we all know that we all have different information on a lot of stuff. Second, um, as a result of that, sometimes people are a little more critical than they might otherwise be because we're worried or whatever. The second uh, issue is that during a time like this, it's harder to communicate. Those of you who are at home, you get this video and what else is going on. We're not ever all together in the same place, so we don't always get to ask one another questions. And so when communication is incomplete, the information is incomplete. So what happens, I call you and I ask you, I said, so what do you know about this? And you tell me, and I tell the next person, and the third person who hears it from me, well, they get it a little wrong. And so misinformation gets out. So you have people who are on edge, you got misinformation, people are not sure what's going on, and that can lead to rumors, and uh, sometimes some hurt feelings over things that aren't quite correct. Um, and so this was just nipping it in the bud. We've had a few of those, nothing serious, I don't think, but this is trying to nip that in the bud and just encourage us. If you have a question, call the folks. Don't, don't hesitate. Call us. I think we can answer your questions. And just to help us through this, um, certainly less than I do. But we go through it together. It, it made me think of, uh, you know, how many times you try to do one thing and it does end up accomplish it. This is a kind of letter to accomplish some of the things we wanted. But at the same time, it does something else too. This was to still the water. It seems in some places it's actually gotten them a little bit stirred up. Um, let's heed the words of our Lord when there was a storm and everything was all stirred up. What did he say? Peace, be still. Right? That's really what this is all about. Um, the family of God moving through together. Let's just do that as unity. Not that we're having real problems with that. It's just, you know, when you start to see something going on, you prepare it before it breaks um, rather than waiting for anything to happen. No worries. If you have worries, call it on. All right. Um, and now on to what we're really here for today, which is our worship. Today is the feast.
Greetings of St. Timothy. Uh, today, Timothy and two days Titus. Uh, sometimes they're going to be celebrated together on the day between because they go together. Timothy and Titus, uh, co-workers with Paul, in particular Timothy. Timothy was with Paul on a lot of his journeys. He's mentioned in a lot of Paul's letters as Timothy is, is with me sending this letter. Um, and Timothy uh, was then put in place, so was Titus elsewhere, as sort of the head pastor, almost a sort of regional bishop of an area after Paul was there. Paul was with, established the church with his mission work, with his helpers. Then it's time for Paul to go on. But the church isn't established. How will they continue to take care of themselves? Timothy, Titus, stay behind, help get the church organized. Part of their work is um, finding pastors and training them and preparing them, training churches to understand how to do things. And so um, that's kind of Timothy's spot. Paul wrote two letters to Timothy and one to Titus that are in our Bible. Uh, and they give guidance on churches starting out in a particular pastoral office. So uh, we remember Timothy in large part as kind of a representative of the pastoral office. And so we'll hear a little of that today. It's not the centerpiece, but we'll hear a little bit. Um, but we do remember Timothy, our biblical, um, biblical forefather in and so we open with a hymn that you will um, hear echoes of in our in our main piece. <laughs> unto the Lord. And in the great of my sins. O Almighty God, mercy 
merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. But the command of grace for the wonder of the Lord, your faithfulness is the memory of the Holy One. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. such as Timothy, to guide and feed your flock. Make all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and administer your means of grace, and grant your people wisdom to follow in the way that leads to life eternal. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading for the feast of St. Timothy, pastor and confessor, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the 16th chapter. Paul came also to Derby and Lystra. A disciple there uh, named, was named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium, Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, 
they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith, and they increased in numbers daily. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, I will search for my sheep and will seek them out. I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered. I will send shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to St. Timothy, the first, or first letter, the sixth chapter. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you, in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who is his testimony, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal domination. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Alleluia. The saying is trustworthy that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory be to the Lord. Jesus said, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? <clears throat> Blessed is that servant whom his master will find doing so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise you. Christian and apostolic church. I am 
Our catechism for this week is printed in the bulletin, and it is, What is the Eighth Commandment? And what does this mean? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our epistle lesson, the Holy Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. And by extension, he's telling us, fight the good fight of the faith. The Christian life is not one of ease. The Christian life is not one of constant success one good thing after another, everything goes the way we want it to. Not in this world of sin anyway, in heaven, but not here. As long as we live, we are in the combat zone. We are at war with sin and its effects in this world. We fight the demons and we fight the evil that they pour into the world. We are to be the soldiers. We are to fight the fight. You, oh man of God, or woman of God, you fight the good fight of the faith. That fight is active, and it is real. People are suffering all over this world because of the evils of sin and the curse that that evil brings. Some are starving, and some are sick. Some are lonely, some are afraid, and some are victims of bullying. Others are victims of serious crimes and even smaller ones. Some are caught up in the web of lies that the world throws at us. Lies like uh, sexual activity out of, outside of marriage between a man and a woman is to be encouraged or at least approved. A lie. Lies that tell lost souls who aren't quite sure what to make of their life at this point that they should seek truth by denying the sex that God gave to them at birth, that God wants them to be. All kinds of lies. Some people are caught in addiction. Caught up in addiction to alcohol or drugs or gambling or porn or almost anything else, to be honest. Some are held down by ignorance and poor education. Others are held down by abusive parents or partners. Some are held down by racism, sexism, other isms, I suppose. The sin cracks that have formed in the perfect face of God's creation are so many and so devastating, we could never mention them all. So you and I are sent out as the army of God on earth. It's our charge to fight against that enemy. It's our command from God to fight. Now, as with any large army, none of us is going to be part of every battle. There are too many evils and too big of a world, but every one of us has his or her part to play. There will be those who are on the front line bringing justice and healing and relief directly to the point of suffering lawyers and aid workers and EMTs and doctors and nurses and police officers and military personnel and, and many others. But there's also always a support staff to take care of those on the front line. The farmer who grows the food and the trucker who delivers it and the sugar beet factory worker who processes it, they all play their part. And some will provide support through financial donations tens and hundreds and thousands and pennies and dimes and quarters. This money provides the goods and sends the workers who then deliver the food to the starving or the medical care to the people who are suffering. We all have a part to play and we all also must be part of the speaking and standing against evils where we can. Speaking and standing against the evil of abortion 
and all the evil and suffering that it causes in our country. We also must all be part of offering comfort and support to women who've had abortions, who need to know the forgiveness from Christ that's there for their sin freely by faith. And we also need to be part of helping to ease the burdens that lead women to have abortions in the first place. Plenty of fronts on that battlefield. Everyone in his or her own way is called to fight the fight. We do it locally also. You may never fly to South America to be the one who unloads boxes of food from the truck and places them in the hands of the hungry people. But you may be one who can volunteer here in town for the Thanksgiving dinner or donate to Christmas for Kids or join one of the service clubs. You might befriend a lonely person. You might deliver meals on wheels. You might call members of our church or other people who are shut in and aren't able to get out and see folks and just visit with them and ease their isolation. By the way, if you are someone who is shut in at home, that's something you can do as you wonder, what can I do? All of these battles are important. But even more crucial than all of these is the combat against the evil one, Satan, that takes place when God's word is preached and his sacraments are delivered. On the front line here are pastors and missionaries. God calls these men to speak his word in truth without compromise because it is that true, uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ that slays the demons. It destroys the evil ones who bother and possess and attack people. And it keeps at bay the reinforcements that we come after. That's why we are to offer our sons in the church as pastors. When you see a young man who you think has the skill set to be a pastor, tell him so. And then pray for him that God would lead him where God wants him to be, whether you're right or not. And if your own son expresses interest in being a pastor, don't be afraid and don't discourage him. You may not envision your son growing up to be a pastor, but guess what? Neither did Timothy's parents, I'm guessing especially his dad. Um, quite honestly, I had other plans. So did my brother who followed me into the ministry and in full truth, and for that matter, all the apostles also had other plans for their lives, except for Paul, who planned to be a Pharisee and participate in the stoning of Christians. So his path changed, too. But not all of us are called into frontline gospel ministry, any more than we're all engineers or herdsmen or mechanics, none of which I'm equipped to do. But there are supply lines in the spiritual battle just as there are in the physical. We all serve in those areas. Your offerings and your prayers, of course, are the bedrock support for the soldiers who wield the sword of God's word. But there are also hands-on ways to participate and support that ministry. And many of you do. Teaching Sunday school or vacation Bible school. Inviting friends to church with you. Just bringing your grandchildren to church. All of these ways. Thus far, we have considered the war that God sends us to fight with the evil that's outside of us. That is ours to fight. But just as every earthly soldier first must discipline his or her own body and mind to prepare for the fight, the good fight of the faith also begins internally with us in the heart and soul of each individual Christian. At the beginning of our reading, Paul said, flee these things, and we all thought, what things? It's a good question. Well, if we go back to the verses right before we began to read, Paul was describing some of the false, misdirected roads that we can go down as Christians. He began with the most dangerous, false teaching. We go down that road when we read and listen to preachers who have wrong doctrine, thinking we're going to be really good at pulling out that part. And I like this speaker. I know he's not Lutheran, but, um, but even more than that, by choosing certain parts of God's word that we will like and follow, but then other parts that I know the Bible says that, but. 
He also warns against greed and against discontent with what God has given us. And he also warns against divisiveness and nitpicking and complaining about things that are not essential that divide the body of Christ. But I think we could include safely in his list all kinds of unrighteousness. Everyone, flee these things. Our first, our internal fight is to flee from all those temptations to sin and instead to run full speed ahead to begin to live out the eternal life that we have received through Christ. The eternal life that we have been reborn to live. And that is a life of being in the image of God once again. It is a life that Paul lists this way. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. As a mighty army, the people of God are armed and prepared by God the Holy Spirit to stand firm wherever he places us to fight the evil. But look around you. And you will see failure on every side. For every one Christian who risks life and reputation and treasure to stand firm on the true word, there are hundreds and thousands who run away at the very first hint of a threat that will take away their ease or take away their own will and their own plans and place themselves under God's orders. And every time a wave of temptation or persecution comes, more and more of God's people fade away because of the difficulty until those who refuse to submit, those who refuse to allow the evil to go unfought, they seem to stand nearly alone. And we must all admit that we are often among those who fail, sometimes after some time of fighting and sometimes before the first trouble even shows up. Sometimes fleeing from troubles we only imagine. More often than we are fully faithful, we are faithless and our fight is weak and it is uncertain. But do not despair because the army is not ours. It's Christ's. And our Lord Jesus Christ has already won the war. The victory is already assured. His death and his resurrection have determined the final outcome, and not only of the war, but of your salvation. Your eternal salvation is won by Christ. We do not enter eternity only if we've been perfect and faithful warriors in every detail, but rather we enter only because the Holy Spirit of God keeps us as faithful believers in Christ, trusting Him only. Our victory is perfected by our champion, Jesus, the one who has risen from the dead. So even when you fail, even when we prove to be cowards today, we still always remain forgiven. We are always renewed in the spirit. Like medicines and provisions for an army in the field, the world, the word and sacrament of God restore our strength, restore our resolve, and they empower us to return to the battle again the next day. And there in the next battle, and in the next, we see that although some Christians who stood unbent against one challenge shrink away the next day, it's also true that others who on the first day gave up immediately, today will prove to be heroes of the faith in some other area tomorrow. Even if you have been the worst coward today, by the Holy Spirit within you, you may be tomorrow's great hero. It's not on our shoulders to win the victory. Christ has done that for us. 
But it is our calling as Christians to battle evil, even within ourselves and in the world around us. It is our calling as Christians to fight the good fight of the faith. So fight, brothers and sisters, but do so with the sure and certain faith that by Christ's work, your victory is already won. And by our struggle and our fight, we don't earn our way into heaven. Instead, we force out the devil and we force out his army and we bring the effects of Christ's victory to the world that is hurting so much. Fight the good fight of faith. Empowered, protected, and strengthened by the one who has already won, Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We stand. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. church, that as this world passes away, we may be bold to proclaim the new life in Christ and his victory over the devil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the church's mission, that as Christ called Timothy, he may continue to call and send faithful preachers also in our time. And for those who generously support the missionaries, seminaries, colleges, and other institutions of our church for the spread of the gospel and the service of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our sister congregations in the Thumb Circuits, including especially St. Peter Lutheran Church in Bach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For courage and strength to fight the good fight of faith in our own lives, in our communities and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation and its leaders, that God would spare them and all who serve for the good of this people, that God would call to repentance those who have forgotten him, and that he would not let disaster befall us, but preserve us in peace and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion in our country and around the world. For compassionate care of the dying and suffering that does not end the life of God's created person. And for an increase in compassion and care for those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our nation and its leaders. That God would spare them and all who serve for the good of this people. That God would call to repentance those who have forgotten him. That he would not let disaster befall us, but preserve us in peace and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For confidence in the resurrection and the peace of a good conscience, by the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. God would graciously behold and help those for whom we pray, especially Kendall, Carrie, Ruth, Ron, Evelyn, Barb, Tim, Colleen, Dale, Betty, Bill, Posey, Caroline, and Jim. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, 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 earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day, day our daily bread, bread. And, forgive and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy 
Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit 